everyone please welcome Matt Parker at Globe Sherpa. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes? Yes? yes. Okay. Um, I'm Matt Parker, I'm the CEO of Globe Sherpa, and that biography is, boy, it sounds ridiculous. I don't know how I ended up in software development. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about our story to disrupt the transit industry and the ticketing industry. Before I go into my show and tell here, um, I want to tell you a little bit about how we got to where we are. So we're a small startup, we're a software company based here in Portland. In fact, we share offices with iSight Design. They've been a fantastic partner in helping us really craft killer user experience. Um, but this all started back when I was a Peace Corps volunteer. I was an ecotourism volunteer in Senegal, West Africa. And uh, I was always just blown away by the fact that these travel guides I'd read, the Rough Guide, Lonely Planet Guide, were always out of date. They were quickly just out of date and out of content. When I came back to the US, I ended up going uh, to get my MBA at PSU. And as I was there, we had to write our first business plan for product or service of our choosing. So I wrote a business plan for Globe Sherpa, which was a travel guide for your phone. This was 2007. And so this was when the iPhone first debuted. Uh, I assure you it was a totally novel idea to have user-generated content on your phone at that time. And so I was going through, I wrote the plan, uh, and one of my colleagues in class read it and said, hey man, this is really freaking cool, are you gonna do it? And I said, I, I don't know the first thing about software. He said, well, I'm an engineer, so let's, let's get together. That was the culmination of a great friendship, and that guy is Michael Gray, our CTO, my co-founder. Michael and I dug into what we saw as a huge growing marketplace for B2B apps that smartphones could provide and generate. We looked at four distinct verticals that we thought had potential. We looked at travel, we looked at news and entertainment, we looked at real estate, and we looked at the public sector. And what our research revealed was that the public sector, perhaps not surprisingly, was woefully underserved by really smart technology. And within that space, we found that parking, and transit, in particular, had these really great opportunities to solve common problems and provide recurring revenue if you did it right. So we went into it, and uh, we started driving into transit and the parking, and I called my friend at the mayor's office and said, hey, do you guys have any plan for mobile payments for parking? I'd love to just be able to pay for my parking for my phone. He said, well, Matt, let me hook you up with uh, our head of parking. Okay? His name is Ellis McCoy. And so I said, great. So I, so I show up to my meeting and I'm all jazzed because everyone has said, oh, this is a killer idea. I would totally pay for this. This is great. And I sit down with Ellis and he's, he's kind of cool to the whole notion of mobile payments for parking. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, come on. Well, he said, you know, people here are really pleased with the smart meters in town. Very convenient. Put your card in. Really easy to go. <laughs> well, I came back a little bit disheartened. And uh, told Michael, shit, man, I don't know, they just didn't like it. Um, four months later, Ellis was indicted by the FBI, as many of you know, uh, for taking bribes from the smart meter manufacturers. The reason I mention this is that in the space of kind of being, you know, put down uh, for parking, we said, well, let's call TriMet and see, see what their plan for mobile payments is, mobile ticketing. So I ended up going through the phone book or the, the directory in TriMet. Um, and I got to the letter S, which I don't know if there's a science to how you cold call people, but I started the day and I got to S. Tom Strader, senior fair policy analyst at TriMet, picked up the phone and agreed to have a cup of coffee with me uh, to talk about mobile payments and mobile ticketing. And that was the start of a really interesting relationship. Um, that night I called Michael, I said I finally got someone to respond, I'm ready to go, I need a picture of a mobile ticket. So Michael drummed up a picture of a ticket on a phone. I wrote a one-page executive summary, had a great meeting. Today, TriMet contracted with Globe Sherpa to power all their mobile tickets and mobile payments. So it's, um, it's been a fun evolution to get to where we are. A lot of persistence, a lot of disruption. Um, so let's just show you how it works. So we're all in Portland. By the way, if you get motion sickness, Dramamine would really help. This is a Prezi presentation, so we're gonna be flying around a little bit. So who here rides TriMet once in a while? Anyone here ride every day or commute? 
Awesome. Okay, right on. So what we want to do is to help serve people who ride the bus, go to work, go to school, pick up their kids, uh, maybe just people who ride occasionally, who ride the Max, go to a Blazers game, go to the Timbers game, go to the zoo. Um, if you do that, you've got to use one of these, which is a ticket vending machine, a TVM. We've all probably seen them. Uh, here's one for the Portland streetcar, which they just procured. You may notice now they have these everywhere on the, on the street, so you go through it. Um, these are not quite so easy to use, and what they spit out once you buy a ticket looks like this. It's a little printed ticket. Um, the, the thing on the right is a transfer that was in my pocket for an afternoon. I don't know if I had a really dirty pocket or what was going on there, but needless to say, um, this isn't the most beautiful ticket you've seen, right? And it's not terribly easy for a driver to actually recognize and verify that it's cool. So, all right, another way to do it is you have exact change in your pocket. But, you know, fares change regularly. Maybe you don't quite have that 50 cents you need, so what do you do? Uh, you go into Fred Meyer, maybe Safeway. They sell tickets. Problem is, they run out of the types of tickets a lot of people, a lot of power users look for. Those books of 10, books of five, they don't have it, what do I do? So anyway, it's a problem. And it's a problem that basically creates expressions, like this poor guy on the left. I took this shot at Pioneer Courthouse Square, I, I am telling you, this is a candid photograph. There were probably five other people who had the same expression on their face. This guy's sticking his card in, trying to get it, won't go, and his train pulls up, He's like, oh, I can't get there, I can't go. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, look at that guy. Now, his strange uh, resemblance to Bashar al-Assad notwithstanding, <laughs> um, he does have a smartphone in his right hand, and he's just sunny and happy walking off the train. So I'm like, this tells the globe of the story. The only problem with this picture is that it's sunny, and as we know in Portland, it's gonna be raining. And you're waiting in line for the ticket vending machine, it's pouring down rain. So, needless to say, we think this is dumb and there should be an easier way to do it. So, what is the problem? The problem is that buying and using a ticket as a rider is not terribly easy, but for transit authorities, our key customers, it's really expensive to issue a ticket the way they do today. TriMet pays up to 28% the cost of every ticket it issues through those ticket vending machines to pay for the hardware, the software, the printing, production, distribution, reconciliation of the tickets. They have to hire armored trucks and vans to pick up the cash, bring it back to TriMet. It's a problem. And this creates no connection between TriMet and its end user, its rider. So what can we do? Well, I want to start by showing you a little video. This is uh, my designer, Alex, who I asked to go buy something from a regular vending machine. <coughs> So, notice what she's doing. Um, she put in a dollar, and I think she's going for some m and She likes chocolate, so she's going D2. Gonna get that, okay? Anyone used a regular vending machine in a while? You've seen this, right? This looks normal, okay. All right, well, so she gets her chain, she's good. Now, let's go to a, a ticket vending machine on the Portland streetcar. Um, this is me walking onto the streetcar. Sorry, it's not a little faster, bear with me. But we're walking on the streetcar, all right, so here are the fares, that's pretty clearly marked, I can see what I need to get. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm two zone, I'm gonna get that. That's where the change comes out. Here are the buttons, those are pretty clear, pretty nicely designed, right? You can, you can read it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put my dollar in and get my ticket. Put my dollar in and get my ticket. Put my dollar in and get my ticket, put my dollar in. I couldn't get the damn ticket. And the reason is that on those machines, you have to select what you want, then put the money in. So if you ever gone and said, I want the M&Ms, and then you put the money in, you put the money in, then you get the M&Ms. My point is that user experience design is absolutely crucial to making a successful experience and something as easy as just buying a ticket. So we took it really seriously. So. What's the future hold? Well, we heard a lot about NFC, and congratulations to Meadows. I'm a huge fan, huge skier, can't wait for tapping on, you know, tracking my turns. It's gonna be awesome. Um, NFC, as it relates to transit, might be never freaking coming. And so here's, here, just, so NFC-based transit rides by 2016, maybe 14%. So Globesherpa has taken a view on the market that let's absolutely integrate with NFC, let's get ready for it, but let's not, let's not let it delay us to moving forward. Now, what we found, of course, is smartphone penetration is on the rise. We're bullish on it, taking off. 
and these phones allow us to do a lot more. Now, what are our what are our competitors doing? We're not the first to do mobile ticketing. We've seen other people do it. Here are some pictures and screenshots of, of what other companies are doing. So, uh, Unwire on the left is a Scandinavian company, and they kind of take a very literal view of a ticket, uh, where it, it really looks like a ticket. And there it is. Um, Masabi, a company out of Britain in the middle, has this is for Boston. And, the, the three little colors at the top will kind of blink and change so that you can't screenshot it. All right, that's that's a real ticket. And then New York Waterways app, that little water riffle kind of moves past in the background. So we thought, let's do something way cooler. Our solution is to create a mobile application, Transit Sherpa, that we call it, that allows you to easily buy and use a ticket from your phone. And it relies on two things. One, visually authenticated tickets are a flash pass. So if you hop on the bus here today in Portland, you just show the driver, you're good to go. We're replicating that process by showing a bus with animation that passes through the window, but we also embed QR codes to give sort of an audit mechanism, a backstop for security. Let's you basically plan trips, check arrival times. Let's take a look at how it works. So I just launched my TriMet app. I select what kind of rider I am, two basic steps. I'm an adult and I'm going to buy a day pass, I'm riding all day. Let's say I have my kids though and I want to ride with them. I can come in here and maybe buy two two-hour tickets for the kids, take them to the zoo, and I check out because I'm already registered with a debit card or a credit card on our system. When I'm ready to go, I just press use. It'll give me an alert the first time, but it launches a ticket that we think will change how the system works. So there's the stag in downtown Portland, if anyone went to the Occupy movement, for example, it's right down there. Um, there's the library just around the corner, and there's a QR code that we embed in a ticket that can be scanned by fair enforcement personnel. It shows when it was validated, really easy to use, just a couple clicks, versus sticking that card in, waiting to get your ticket, and going for it. Now, if I'm riding in a group, as I said before, we can combine tickets into one. So we don't each need to have this on individual phones. We can use my phone to do an adult and a youth together. We show all of the information that a driver needs to see to, to go through and authenticate the ticket. TriMet, unlike a lot of transit authorities across the US, is an absolute leader when it comes to technology. These guys are smart, they have a great team, and they created a mobile website that has really first-in-class APIs available to developers to integrate with for trip planning, for real-time arrivals. We can log out, we can do this, right? Pretty basic stuff. What if you're at the bus stop at night? We can launch a little safety light to show the bus driver that you're there. So another little safety issue. Do you like this? Does anyone look like you? Okay. So, we also built a customer-facing website, an e-commerce site that really mirrors the look, feel, and process of buying a ticket from the mobile device. So if you're at work and you want to buy a ticket, manage your account, maybe buy a ticket for your kid, you can do it right from this website. And this is, again, like Amazon, you've got a cart, you check out, really easy to use. We employ some neat little isotypes here that relate to the type of ticket and type of rider that you are. But it's pretty standard and it's pretty clean. Just goes through really easily. Now, what does this technology allow us to do? Number one, it allows us to create some tickets that are truly customizable, truly made to, to fit the customer we serve. So if you're a rail provider, the ticket, the second one in, it's, it's a rail-based ticket. If you're the streetcar who we hope to work with, the ticket in the middle looks a little bit more like a streetcar. But more fundamentally, we think that this animation and this custom visual interface really creates an opportunity to even provide incremental revenue opportunities to transit authorities to sponsor a ticket. Maybe it's a Tillamook cheese ticket. Maybe it's a Nike ticket. Furthermore, because we're tracking location and how you use, launch, buy your ticket, we may even be able to have geo-specific tickets. So if you pass by the Nike factory store, you've got a Nike ticket. So how did we get here? We got here through months and months and months of uh, rigorous UX and information design. I really have to hand it to EyeSight and to our friends there. Number one, for putting up with my temper and, and bitching. But number two, for just keeping it simple and helping us get to where we actually you know, came out. This for me was the first time I went through an experience like this. And it's fascinating just how much goes into deciding where a button goes. What does it say? 
How do we make this as simple as possible for the power user who has a month pass a ride every day while still making it possible for a mom and three kids to ride and not have to say, honey, I don't know how to use this thing. So this is kind of the flow that we use to get to where we got. And what we figured out in that process is that any transit ticket uses one of four distinct filters to create a ticket. What type of rider are you? What type of fare are you purchasing? Do you have zones or a geo class? And do you have time of day pricing? So in one fell swoop, we're able to create the TriMet ticket in the back, but here, for example, is the beginnings of what we think could be a C-TRAN ticket in Vancouver, Washington that currently uses zones, so we're able to just figure it out and grow. Now, as I mentioned before, we also show when a ticket expires. We show what type of ticket it is. We have a day code that corresponds to current day codes that operators and fare inspectors know about. So, we're riding, and uh, guess what? You might run into this guy. This is a fare inspector. In fact, this is Gary, who was chief of fare enforcement for TriMet. The first meeting I had with Gary, I came in, and I was like, what do I tell this guy? I, I jumped a train a couple years ago and totally got busted. I said, Gary, I gotta tell you something. A couple years ago, he goes, I know, I looked up your record, Parker. <laughs> I'm serious, I'm serious. Um, we put Gary on our website as well, and I didn't realize he was the head of fair enforcement person. I said, Gary, by the way, in full disclosure, we put you on our website. He goes, oh yeah, I saw it. I have the uh, newer Bluetooth now, but I'm okay with it. That's fine. So, <laughs> Gary's job is a tough one because he needs to make sure tickets are valid and that they work. To assist him and his team in that process, we developed the inspector application. This is another piece of our platform whereby the, the fair enforcement personnel get their own app that has a unique key to decrypt and authenticate every ticket that we have. It won't be every single ticket that gets scanned but one in 10, one in 20, they'll ask to see your ticket, you'll launch your QR code, and Gary will scan it. He'll be able to see when it expires, what type of ticket it is, where you validated it. It's pretty cool, it's pretty simple. Here, let's take a look at how it works. So he just launches the inspector, he presses scan ticket, boom. It's just like that, it's just magic. It's really simple. Now, what if I said, I have a ticket, Gary, my phone died. Wow, that went really fast. Um, we have a little backup system here. If he says, all right, doggy, your homework, what's your phone number? He can type in the phone number, call up to our server, and see if, in fact, you have a valid ticket for that time. So we've got a backstop. Okay, next. TriMet, how do they control all of this? Well, they use what we call TOMS, Ticket Operations Management System. TOMS is the brains and the wizardry behind this that manages all the ticket features and it does everything. A little quick backstory on Tom's. Do you remember Tom Strader, the S in the directory? He was the project manager who started this thing. Well, when we came in and we launched and we introduced the platform, we said in our backend management system is called Tom's. Ticket operations management system. Tom is sitting there smiling. Tim McHugh is the director of IT, the CTO for TriMet. He said, couldn't we call it Ticket Information Management for <laughs> Tim's? Anyway, Tom's, let's take a look at how it works. Tom's is a basic, easily digestible dashboard of information about real-time system use. It has filters here by day range, by time of day, to see how the system is being used by rider type, by ticket type, provides transaction information. By the way, if you saw what the, the other systems out there look like today, I mean, it is, it's like a 386 computer. It, it's really nasty looking, not easily used. This, we think, provides a really seamless interaction. Now, geo analytics are a key part of our platform. This is our code name of the Elixir, and what it does is it shows us where and when people are using their tickets in aggregate so that TriMet can see system behavior over time. How are riders using the system between 5 and 6.30 p.m. around this particular location? What about two-hour tickets versus day passes versus month passes? We can then, in fact, take this and add a heat map to it that shows concentrations of activity. Now, if you're a transit authority, you have to, public, you have to publish reports about your sales and transaction information. It's, it's a basic requirement. So we created easily digested sales and reporting information that can be exported via XML, CSV, JSON, or PDF. Really easy to use. All right. The other piece, 
the magic, I think, in our platform relative to others is that we've created this platform such that you can create customized, configurable tickets whose animations, color, appearance, and security features are really powered by your own choice. So let's just take a look at where it started. This is the type of activity we went through. Again, Melissa Vanderwilt, great uh, user experience designer at iSight, really, God bless her, transit policy, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. This stuff can be really dry, but she got into it deeply. And this is the prototype of our tool using HTML5 Canvas technology. It's what I call Mr. Potato Head. And what it does is we create a sprite, a sprite sheet with unique components of the ticket that we want to use. We can layer those, and then we can really just set how we want to build a custom ticket. So we can bring in the stag, um, you know, we can come in and we can change color, so maybe we'll change the color of the stag just to, to mess around, right? This can change on a, on a key basis. Now let's set the timing and the duration of its movement. We can set that. So what this does, it's not just cool to look at. This is a key security asset to our system. If tickets are changing on a, on a constant basis, it makes it a heck of a lot harder to copy. So, where are we now? This is a snapshot of what TriMet's marketing team has done to launch us, to get people aware, to start that real fascination with the technology, and I think it's pretty killer. Take a look at that. So we are currently in what's called private alpha testing. We'll go into a public beta beginning in January, and the goal is to launch uh, April 4th hopefully, knock on wood, uh, in 2013. What else can we do then? I just want to tease you with this. What else can we do? We think there's an opportunity to use our same underlying technology to serve events and destination ticketing at key stops along a transit system's routes. So what if there was a zoo ticket? Currently, you can show your TriMet Pass at the zoo, and they'll give you a discount to get in because parking is a total mess at the zoo. So we said, well, what if we're able to actually bundle the experience, bundle the convenience, and you can use your phone as your way of getting in at a key destination? Blazers would be another good one. Um, what about parking? Parking Sherpa. Parking Sherpa guide to, to parking. Ellis is looking back at this and saying, you know, yeah, good job. <laughs> parking Sherpa. This really, again, it started organically, but our transit customers themselves have said, we've got these parking rides. Can people use that, you know, your technology to pay for their parking? We said, yes, even though it's not ready yet. Yes, they can, and it will be. So that's where we're going. Um, really appreciate your time and listening. I hope you'll use our technology. Again, we're Globe Sherpa, guide to your world. We make mobile tickets easy today. Thanks.